Good afternoon. I'm Jonathan Grease, the rector of Grace Episcopal Church, and this is the first of a series of meditation on the gospel readings appointed for Holy Week in the Daily Eucharistic Lectionary. Today we read John 12, verses 1 through 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave him dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Jesus, Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well. And it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. Here ends the reading. In all the congregations I have worshipped in or served since I began the ordination process more than 20 years ago, it's been the custom to offer daily Eucharist during Holy Week. So this is first the first time in all those years that one of my most familiar Holy Week observances is in abeyance. Over the years I've come to love these Gospel readings for Holy Week as they reflect on and help us enter into the last days of Jesus' life. The anointing at Bethany is one of the most familiar and most powerful stories in the Gospel of John. Jesus is visiting the home of his friends Lazarus, Mary, and Martha six days before the Passover. They throw a dinner party. We can imagine that it's a celebration not only of his visit, but also of, Jesus, of Lazarus having been raised from the dead. In the midst of this party, Mary does something extraordinary and extravagant. She gets on her knees breaks out a jar of costly perfume, anoints Jesus' feet, and wipes his feet with her hair. We're told that the aroma of the perfume filled the house, and we learn that the perfume cost 300 denarii. That's roughly a year's day wages for a day laborer. What would that be in today's money? $15,000 or more? Think of Mary. Think of her grief upon her brother's death. Think of the days or weeks she and her sister had cared for him during his illness, had worried about him, had feared for his death. Think of her frustration and anger at Jesus for not having come when they asked for him, knowing that he could have prevented his friend's death. Think of her surprise, her joy, when Jesus called and Lazarus came out of the tomb. Think of her again, helping her brother return to the living, embracing him, and now celebrating his miraculous return and celebrating the one who is responsible for his being returned to life. Was her anointing of Jesus really preparation for his burial? Or was it more likely some wildly inappropriate attempt to thank Jesus for giving Lazarus back to them? Think of us this week as we reflect on Mary and try to engage with the rituals and stories of our faith. Even when we cannot gather as physical community, when the various bodily gestures we typically make throughout this week are not possible, can we imagine ourselves in this scene? Can we imagine ourselves with our own offerings the gifts of our open hearts and souls, can we imagine ourselves at Jesus' feet, bathing them in perfume and wiping them? Can we imagine preparing ourselves and preparing Jesus for his burial? Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.